pick loco zero zero loco Let's see there's that noise gotta love that noise Eat that noise hate that noise <laughs> it sounds so bad anyways enough of that noise let's turn that off uh, so now we're just going to basically start by uh, taking the shell apart and that is something I have to learn so I'm assuming that uh, you know we're going to take the take the couplers off once we remove the couplers I'm hoping the body just lifts I know these four screws here or it's what holding the bar holding the bottom of the motor in there and looking at my wheels here they could use a, a bit of a cleaning and shining and whatnot but uh, that's what I'll do next pull that apart and see where we are from there so I apologize about the angle here I, uh, I can never get a, a decent angle for trying to get this uh, done but um, anyways I've been able to take the shell off and now I'm just taking the light board off possible so now I'm just taking out the board here there's your dummy plug and uh, it's just held in by those typical little black clips camera never focuses um, so after looking inside the shell here I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to keep the, the, the bulbs that are in there um, I can replace them in the future if I want but uh, they're, they're glued in there and they, they seem to be fitting nicely in the shell and that uh, goes for the Both front ones, ones too. Anyways, enough rambling on with that. I'm going to continue playing with these clips that I hate trying to get off. Um, I can never get these clips off easy. Um, Tommy seems to just take them off with ease and I struggle with them every time. But uh, I just try to push on it, get it off, and pull it out just like that. I don't know if you're actually getting much there with the angle I have, but uh, yeah, that's, that's usually what I go with is prying it off and getting them stuck in the wheels and the trucks. So that's what I'll do for now. Once I get this all apart and the wires kind of separated there, then uh, I'll start looking into drilling out and getting the LEDs prepped for going in the shell and then now I've had the shell separated basically that's uh, that's all you have left is just the board on top of the motor there so you just take your screwdriver very carefully and just get under there you want to separate the board from the, the actual motor just like that and there you go so now that's the uh, the light board that comes stock on the DC P42, just like most Athern trains and everything. That's the clip. You can see the clip there if it focuses, which it never does. And uh, there we go. So now that we've got that apart, I'm just gonna leave that aside because I got some prep I gotta do on that. I gotta solder a wire on the top of the motor. I've got the negative or the what would normally be the, the gray wire coming from the bottom of the motor already there. These are going to be my positives. I got my one negative or my ground, whichever. And uh, now I'm going to start working on drilling out my ditch lights and my uh, reverse lights there, which I'm going to. I don't think this is going to focus very well. I really don't understand why it's not focusing. My $400 camera autofocus is bullcrap. Anyways, um, I'm going to drill that out and we'll go from there. Okay, now before putting your $80 or $100 whatever Tsunami decoder on this train, you want to make sure that the motor is 100% not grounded so nothing blows anything like that so one way of just testing that out is uh, 
first of all, I'll get rid of my one alligator clip here. So now I have it on. The track has got power and everything like that. So if this motor was grounded to the chassis on the bottom, it would go right now. But as you can see, it's not. But if I take the, the ground pickup and attach it to the ground on the bottom of the motor, now you'll see that it is going. So that automatically will tell you right there that the motor is not grounded out on the bottom of the chassis, which typically isn't in any of the new trains uh, these days, uh, the newer models. I mean, the older blue box and different things like that where it was grounded to the bottom, that's, that's typically where you run into that uh, um, issue of it being grounded. So I just wanted to give that quick tip on how to make sure it is 100% safe before putting your $100 decoder on there and possibly risking blowing it. So, all right. It's the next day now. I kind of got tired of working on it last night. So um, basically now what I'm doing is I'm just uh, prepping the shell to be able to get the LEDs to fit in my, uh, my shell there. Um, so what you can do is as you can see is those two top holes there I've drilled out to fit the two millimeter red LEDs for when it's going in reverse. And then underneath of it, I drilled out enough there so it's going to be uh, the two millimeter white LEDs going in there. And then of course these lights I said I'm going to keep the same so we'll see how uh, much of a contrast there is different from the white ditch lights to the, the lights that are in, uh, in the middle there, the main headlights. So um, now what I'm doing is, um, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see this very well. But uh, I'm now angling the red LED. That's the one that's going to go in there. So it fits to the angle right on the shell there. So when it's in there, it just all fits flush. This one here was my uh, first attempt. I'm not really liking the angle, so I'll probably do it again. But just to give you an idea how I'm doing it, uh, for something as small and precise as that, I'm just simply using just a piece of, I don't know what this is, probably thousand grit sandpaper, and I'm just rubbing it on there, and it puts it to a nice little angle. So you can, uh, can you work with that? And then of course the white LEDs, they're not gonna be sitting on an angle, they fit just straight in there. So if I put it inside here right now, you'll see push it in there you'll see that it, you know it, it, it fits too far out my lights really bad because I'm right beside a window you can see right there that it's sitting too far out so so now I just have to grind those down um, with it being such a big grind I might use a Dremel just to, to grind it down but it doesn't hurt the LED you just grind it down to whatever size you're looking for so that's what I'm working on right now. Once I get that done, I'm gonna see, uh, hook it up and see the, the light differences there. Okay, so it's another day. I am kind of in a pause right now. If you've been watching my last couple videos, I had a little bit of an issue with uh, the decoder, um, which I, I think I pretty much knew right off the bat that there was some sort of issue. I've never dealt with a decoder where if you hook up your headlights or your rear lights, that it won't shut off with the F0. So push come to shove anyway, it doesn't matter. It's a, it was a dead or a, a faulty decoder, which I said in my last email or uh, video there. So anyways, uh, I'm kind of at a pause stage right now. So I'm just going to end this as a part one uh, video. Uh, just let you know where I'm at. So um, I did not keep the bulbs as you saw uh, earlier in this video. I have decided to gone uh, or I have gone all LEDs uh, for the front and uh, that right there is a prepped uh, series. I've hooked up two LEDs and uh, put the, uh, the positive to the negative and then put the uh, um, resistor on there. And then I've got uh, my tail lights which are going on the front. Kind of uh, hard to say that but um, I've got them all done and put on a, a good angle there 
Um, so I've put them in the, the shell just to see if the angle fit nice and I've got the two there done. And then I have gone ahead, got my uh, ditch lights that are those shaved it down. I actually didn't use a Dremel. Uh, all I did is used uh, some more coarse sandpaper to get it close and then finished it up with a thousand grit again. Gave it a nice smooth finish on the end. And then what I've done is I've painted it black around there, which I'm going to do with the red ones as well, which I'm going to do with the headlights as well. That way it doesn't emit much light and glow in the, uh, the, the other LEDs when they're all in the front. Um, I'm going to do some research. I lived beside the uh, train station there for a year and um, I've never once seen lights on the back of the, uh, the P42 when they were running backwards or anything like that so I'm going to just look into that a little more and see if I'm going to be putting lights in the back or not because I like to try to keep it as prototypical as possible and of course putting lights in the back will be less work for me if I don't have to do so. Um, so if that's the case then uh, I've, I took the bulbs out, they had them in there and uh, I just don't think that the, uh, the VIA um, P42 has lights that shine in the back. Um, so that's that, that's where I'm at as you can see. Uh, my train right there does not have a decoder. I've already taken it off. I've already shipped it. It's already in transit on its way to Soundtracks. Uh, and they're going to look at it there. Hopefully get it all fixed up for me right quick so I can get back to this project because I'm really pumped to get my P42. It's probably one of my favorite uh, locos that I have for VIA for when collecting my VIA there. So uh, The only thing that I'm doing now is uh, trying to figure out what's going on with my worm gear. Again, I did another video in the uh, um, uh, my last video there, just kind of showing like what I'm going to be kind of maybe working on with this. Um, sorry, I'm just taking my uh, camera off the, the thing there. Let's see if I can uh, get this to focus and uh, get this out of the way and see if I can just like doing it slow. See it jump and then it goes down and then it comes back and it goes up. And it goes down. Um, give me a second here. I might be able to get it to focus on that. And not at all. But uh, this is what I'm going to be working on. It goes up. See it jump in there when I'm doing it slow? That's what it's doing. It doesn't do it in back, going backwards. It stays nice and straight backwards. And. Uh, That's what I'm going to work on. Anyways, leaving it at that. Um, I'm going to end this part one right here, right now. And when my decoder comes back in, hopefully all nice and repaired and working, uh, we will continue on going from there. So anyways, thank you for watching part A. Uh, thanks for everyone's help on this so far. And uh, we'll see you soon with part B.